Uh, by way of credentials, I uh, received my medical education at Baylor College of Medicine, finishing in 1981. My OB-GYN residency was completed in 1985, and I've practiced obstetrics and gynecology in Longview uh, for 32 years, actually transitioning several years ago to hormone therapy, and I'm glad to say I'm, retaining, I'm beginning to recover some of those lost hours of sleep at this point. Um, but I was self-taught uh, on ultrasound. Actually, when I was a, a medical student uh, on the OB-GYN uh, rotation, uh, they had a very primitive old vacuum tube, huge, rolled around on a cart ultrasound machine. And that, I was self-taught on that. I, I took an interest in it. And so, as was said earlier, the, the tools, the technological tools available in medicine have changed a lot and have progressed uh, since the 1970s. So when I first opened my practice in 85, I bought an ultrasound machine and I did my own ultrasounds for over 20 years and used ex uh, ultrasound extensively throughout all the years of my practice just as an extension of my physical examination. It's, it's an incredibly valuable tool to be able to look inside the body and especially from obstetrics to look inside the womb. It just really puts me closer to exactly what's going on. I, I can get a better, much better idea of uh, uh, many things about the pregnancy and it also connects the mom because the mom is sitting there seeing the, seeing the, uh, the picture at the same time. Um, with regards to the standard medical practice related to uh, 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 pregnancy, let me just say that most uh, women will have their first OB visit around seven to eight weeks, or at least in the first trimester. Ideally, we'd like to get the patients in early so that we can get an ultrasound done. That ultrasound establishes both viability and dates because dates are sometimes wrong, and it's good to know so we can predict the due date. That viability is really primarily uh, upon seeing the, the, uh, the ultrasound heartbeat. And the first ultrasounds around seven to eight weeks are generally done with an abdominal probe ultrasound as I did in my office. By eight weeks, if a fetal heartbeat, and I use the term fetus because of the standard medical terminology here, but the fetal heartbeat, if it, the baby's heartbeat is seen by eight weeks, there's a 98% chance that there will be a successful pregnancy. Uh, at six weeks, that's around 78%, and by, by 10 weeks, if a fetal heartbeat, a baby's heartbeat is seen, there's about a 95 and a half percent chance of a successful pregnancy. Um, for most uh, patients, the, what they really want to hear is what we heard the recording of earlier is the baby's heartbeat on Doppler, the external monitor that we apply at each visit. That's usually heard for the first time around nine and a half to 10 weeks. And of course, it's something we listen to every time uh, the, uh, the patients come in for an exam. And it's, it really truly is something that, that every patient, every mom looks forward to hearing. And that's the one thing that they are most keyed on, in on is, have you heard the heartbeat? Can we hear the heartbeat today? Um, at around nine to 10 weeks also, um, some patients would like to have a genetic screen, a blood test now. This is again part of the technology that's advanced. It's a very straightforward kind of thing that if a patient chooses to have it, there's virtually a 98% chance of, de of detecting uh, genetic abnormalities by way of a blood test during early on in the pregnancy. Um, but then as far as some developmental abnormalities, then by usually around 20 to 24 weeks, a second ultrasound will be done in order to just fully look at the baby in all aspects of their anatomy. Um, and there, there are some uh, abnormalities that are not chromosomal, but developmental that would be picked up at that point. Um, the fetal heartbeat is seen, the baby's heartbeat can be seen on the abdominal ultrasound as early as about six and a half to seven weeks, just in general. Um, and let me just say that as far as uh, the personal integrity of the physician with, with regards to this bill, uh, once a pregnancy is passed about six weeks, it, then it should be detectable, it should be able to be seen. What is the unborn child's state of development typically at the point at which you can first hear that unborn child's heartbeat? Okay, so if you, by 10 weeks or so, you know, most of the anatomy is, is fully developed. Um, um, 
you know, the, and if you look at the ultrasound at that point, the baby's usually moving. You can see arms and legs. Um, uh, it's, it's fairly, not completely fully developed as far as the, uh, all, all the anatomy, but, but uh, usually that by 13 weeks, 12 to 13 weeks, that, that full development's occurred. So it's just a few weeks later. Doctor, you're a, as, a, as a physician, obviously you're a scientist by training and by practice. Many times uh, the term science is bandied about and folks on different sides of the political spectrum will employ science at different times. But let's talk about science as it relates to the heartbeat. Would it be fair to say that that heartbeat is a, is a measure, is a sign of life from a scientific standpoint? Would you tell us about that? Absolutely. Um, it is one objective thing that, that is visible and can, you can see, obviously, along with movement, that, um, that really defines life. I mean, a heartbeat is, as far as the basic physiologic parameters, the absence of a heartbeat is incompatible with life. Uh, whether you talk about a baby that's, that's six weeks along or one that's, you know, age 95. And um, heartbeat is, is just connected with life. And so... That's, that's the connection I believe that's being made here, and it's one that, that again, every mother will, will make in my office when they hear the heartbeat. They, they're connected, and they know that that baby's alive and things are well. 